Now, look at what's going to happen now, my friends. We are progressing towards the lights. And so for that purpose, I'm going to take some white pigment. So eyes on my palette for just a moment. I don't want to use white straight out of the tube because white alone is too aggressive, too light. Nothing in this painting really justifies pure white. Maybe, maybe here a little bit later on. But aside from that, you know, I'm going to mix a little bit of burnt umber into the white just to create a very, very light gray. And this color is going to enable me to have control over my lights. Now, when I integrate this color into the mix, I'm, I'm changing my brush. I don't want to be working with the same brush that I use for the darks. Uh, I'm going to keep that brush going. And now I'm going to be simultaneously working with the lights and with the darks. So new clean brush, not the previous brush, and still using solvent. And now you're going to notice that some stuff that I've painted, you know, has, has gone too far. And now I'm going to be like having the opportunity to push it back to where it belongs. But I'm going to first start with the lightest areas and get some coverage there. And you're going to see this dark shape has gone too far, right? I wasn't really able to control it very well, but now is my time to control it. So I'm measuring it from here to whomever asked me about proportions. So I'm saying to myself, okay, if this is where the eye socket ends, right, I'm going to need to step to the left and then have a vertical, almost a vertical line to cut into the shape. So boom, I'm cropping into it. I'm sensitive to the proportions based on things that are objective, like geometric angles and angle going downwards. That's very, very important. Basically looking at the shape as an abstract entity that has gone too far to the right and is now being pushed back to where it belongs. All right, that's very fun because now everything that has, you know, been going, uh, how to say it, out of line. No, the police is in town now. Now I can push it back to where it belongs. It's gonna be very fun. Love this part of the process. See, now this again, I'm pushing against it. I'm finding the right shapes. Very nice. Now here, down here, you know, I kind of want to push against that shape, but I'm a little reluctant to use the white, you know, the same pigment as it is because this area gets a little darker. So no problem, you know, I take this white pigment on the palette, I put it to the side, and I carry a little bit more of my burnt umber into it to produce a darker light color that I can use. For this area. Eh, can go darker than that. I hope everybody's following along with my palette, palette camera. That's much better, see? So I've descended in value so that I make sure that I don't burst my bubble. You know, I want to maintain very, very strict value control. Well, it's not very, very strict because it can be stricter, but much stricter than what we were able to apply with just the underpainting or just with the charcoal. You know, this is, this is the next level. And this eyelid over here is not as light as we, you know, Everybody's tempted to think that these shapes are way, way, way lighter than they actually are. Not that light. So to people here who are a little bit more advanced, what's happening here right now, you could think about it as like a half underpainting, half grisaille because an underpainting doesn't really take me more than 20 minutes, 30 minutes. And now, since I have more, I'm gonna make it more sophisticated, more fancy, more fun, and, and a stronger foundation for continuing this painting next week. And I really can't wait to show you when we get into color, because Bougaro mixed some 
beautiful colors in this one. It's gonna be really fun to do that. Right, let's get into the nose a little bit. Very light shape, can't ignore that. And if there are any questions, this is a good time. And if not, I'll just thank everybody for joining me and I'm happy that you're following along. Some of you DM'd me on Instagram after last time that you were painting along with me and it was so fun to see and I was sharing them to my story. So if anybody else is sketching while I'm working, share it with me please because these are really fun photos to have. So just when I'm going over this edge, as you notice, I just dipped into more of that burnt umber just so that I'm not working with something that's so brutally, brutally light. I have this like variation here of a, of a color that's not light and not dark. It's a middle color. And the middle color is of course very, very useful in the majority of the meeting points between the dark and the light. And in this case, when I'm sculpting the nose, I'm going to come back and forth between my dark brush and my light brush until I'm sufficiently satisfied with how this meeting point is looking. Don't want to create unnecessarily sharp transitions. I want to make sure that things are as soft as they need to be. Now here, this shape, under here, I wasn't really able to express up until now, but now I can. This light shape under here, beautifully triangular. Um, and? Yes. Uh, really quickly, everyone, I was accidentally booted from the meeting. Oh! A crash. So could you please, if I miss any questions, uh, write those again in the chat because my chat has refreshed. So, uh, Ken, I'm going to make you the host just to uh, be safe, okay? No problem, Jonathan. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thanks for returning. <laughs> we missed you. <laughs> no, we didn't. It's okay. Nobody knows. And thanks for everybody's patience with our handling of technology. It's not every day that a bunch of painters have to learn how to use a computer. But uh, we're doing our best to bring you the content that you want. So also, if you have any feedback for us, stuff you'd be interested in, letting us know how the lesson went for you and how you feel about it, please go ahead and email us at Jonathan. What's the email for CCS? We're going to get that soon. Hopefully, Jonathan will return to us. I think it's info at Chelsea Classical Studio. You can also DM it to me on Instagram. It's easy, it's easy to get me on Instagram or to email me through my website, kengoshin.com. This is working really nicely. Now I'm debating what color to use for the beard. Maybe, yeah, I'm gonna do the same. Gotta use the same. Not gonna, not gonna make it too sophisticated. I'm just gonna straight go for this. Very nice. And I'm already letting you know that I'm, I'm so, so tempted <laughs> to add another pigment to my palette, but we'll see if I have time. Because it's just so fun to work on a drawing that's already working. It really keeps your underpainting under control. It keeps you, you know, ahead of the game. Now over here, notice what's going on here. Like this 
is more neutral. This area of the beard is, is, is so, so, so neutral that I'm actually tempted to mix it instead of uh, white and burnt umber, I'm gonna use white and raw umber. So notice the difference that's gonna be created here. I'm gonna move my solvent to the side, take some more white, and instead of burnt umber, I'm gonna use the raw umber. It's nice to be able to express some of these differences in the early stages, why not? Take some more raw umber to bring the orange out of my brush. Let's see if that creates a nice difference. Barely visible, but we know it's there. It's just a hint, my friends, just a hint. Jonathan, you with us? I'm sure Jonathan's experiencing some difficulty. So if he's not gonna come back, I am for sure gonna stay with you, read all the questions in the chat and make sure everybody's got their questions answered. Don't worry about it. We'll stay as long as it takes. This is fun. Now I'm going to use the same neutral variation to tackle the hair because the hair is again not as warm, much more neutral. So that's going to come in very handy. And yeah, just Write your questions in, and whether Jonathan comes back or not, I'll take a look at them. Once I'm done here, we'll do a chat hangout. Make sure that everybody's following and that we know what's going on. Hope everybody's day is going well so far. And thanks for choosing to join us. We appreciate it. I'm gonna go back and say that to everybody who missed the first lesson of how we did the charcoal drawing, it's already up on my Patreon, visible for $2. So it's gonna be fun to have you. And you can join, watch it right now and watch a ton of other videos, which I think you're gonna enjoy. So to anybody who considers doing that, Thanks in advance, appreciate it. Right, now these areas, the dark areas, of course, cannot remain this way. They have to be slightly darker and more neutral. So I grabbed some raw umber and we're gonna try to make that work. And Jonathan was saying Israeli name. So if everybody here is from Israel and watching right now, Tadalaba. אני מאוד מעריך את זה, ואני יודע שממש מאוחר שם עכשיו, אז אני ממש שמח שהצטרפתם. Yes, so that works very nicely. I hope you agree. Bring this a little bit more into the mix. There we go. Right. Very fun, oh man, I can't believe I have to wait a week to continue this. <laughs> I wanna wake up tomorrow and keep working. Such a fun portrait. But I'll wait for you guys, don't worry about it. Not gonna work on this without you. We're gonna all reconvene here next Thursday. Oh, uh, sorry, next, yeah, Thursday, Thursday. And get it done.
And if there's anything else that you want to learn, we're thinking about making new groups happen. So please reach out, reach out to me, reach out to CCS. Tell us, oh, I'd really want to learn whatever, drawing in pastel. I'd really want to learn figure painting. I'm interested in this technique, interested in that. I'm a nerd of this variety or another variety and would like to be provided with nerdy content. We'll do our best to get you everything that you want to learn. We just need to know that there are people who want to sign up. So as soon as we know that, we're very, very happy to move forward with more programming of this nature. Now, do you notice? I know you can't, you can't hear your response, but I wonder, I wonder out loud if you're noticing the differences between the areas that have the burnt umber and the areas that have the raw umber. I think it creates a very, very nice, very, very nice harmony because they're basically the same pigment, raw umber and raw unburnt umber. It's just that one has literally been burnt in an oven and it gave, them, it gave that one a more orangey feel, which I'm using right now. So fun. So fun. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna be staying a little bit later. This is too fun to just cut. All right, how are we gonna do this ear? What is an ear really? Just a bunch of abstract shapes. So if you wanna do an ear and you don't know how to paint an ear, I don't know how to paint an ear, nobody does. Just look, squint, find the abstract shapes and respond. Later, when this dries, we can find smaller abstract shapes and smaller abstract shapes until at the end, we're gonna be surprised to find that we painted an ear. It's gotta be a miracle. An iracle. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's gonna be an iracle. Jonathan's gonna love this. Jonathan, are you back? Let's see now. Now I want to make some darker areas in this ear. Just a few darker moments. Applied simply. Not getting into too much detail. There we go. Didn't do the neck yet. Gonna handle the neck. Jonathan's texting me. Can I see what he says? Oh, I have a lot of messages. Oh, oh, he's here. He's just muted. Oh boy. What an embarrassment. Uh, unmute. Thank sorry, you. sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> It's okay. Iracle, huh? All right. Iracle. Jonathan, don't you love my puns? How entertaining is this lesson? Come on. No comment. All right. Oh, let's, man. Let's see your, your questions here. You have a bunch. Are you working okay. on a live model? No, uh, Benet, the uh, reference should be above in the chat. Um, it's a copy of a painting by Bougaro. Yeah, some, someone is asking, how do you think he painted this? Did he do an underpainting? 100%. If I had to guess, I would say he did a more sophisticated underpainting than this called the grisaille, which is what I want to be doing next time. Uh, and that he used techniques like glazing and also direct painting, all of which I hope to do in the coming meetings. I'm going to be painting this in the techniques that I suspect Bouguereau himself uh, was using. I'm uh, studying this painting very closely and trying to arrive at the most, uh, at the closest outcome that I'm able to arrive at. Yeah, and uh, actually I, I do want to take a moment, Ken, yep. to remind everyone here, or let you guys know, uh, that CCS is looking for a quote unquote intern or assistant uh, to help us with some virtual classes and some blog work. Um, and uh, yeah, there is, we are able to compensate you with 
uh, mediums and solvents. We also have access to other companies to get you some painting goods in exchange for working with us. Uh, so if you are interested or qualified, you can do all of this from home. You can just send us an email at info at chelseaclassicalstudio.com. And uh, yes, so please, uh, if you are interested, send us that. And uh, some other questions here, Ken. Do you know where to put the light and dark? How, do I, I, know? I don't know, hold on. How do you know where to put the light and dark? Well, uh, value control is one of the primary skills that a painter has to learn to develop. And learning how to see in, in, in black and white or in dark and, and light is, is something that you just have to train. You have to practice it for many, many hours. And there are many ways to do that, especially today in the digital age. You know, you could be, for example, uh, making a sketch of an apple from life, you know, and then later take a photo of that apple and change it on your phone to black and white and see, did you get it right? You know, it's a matter of, of practicing to, to see through the color, you know, get, ignore all the colorful stuff, like where's the red, where's the purple, where's the yellow, ignore all of that and just try to see where is the dark and where is the light. And also squinting really, really, really helps with that because it definitely just creates this a uh, very rough separation between things that kind of shock you with how light they are and things that kind of become dim and mysterious. Uh, it's also extremely, extremely useful to copy painters who base their whole career on identifying shapes of light and shapes of shadow. For example, one that comes to mind immediately is Caravaggio. Looking at Caravaggio's painting very closely will help you a lot in your ability to analyze uh, what you see in front of you and identify where you could, uh, where you're seeing light shapes and where you're seeing dark shapes. But also, here's an easy way to do it. Sketch in charcoal, sketch in pencil, you know, sketch in mediums that don't even allow you to use color. You know, once you sketch in charcoal, and there's a really nice video about it uh, in my Instagram, DM me, I'll send you that video, you're gonna love it. You, you sketch in charcoal, you're not even able to deal with, uh, with anything but light and dark. So that really fo forces you to focus on that aspect uh, to, to, the maximum, to the maximum extent. So yeah, DM me on Instagram, I'll send you that uh, charcoal sketching video. All right, this is looking kind of nice. I'm gonna have to get to the shirt. I love that I've put it on for so long, but it's gonna have to happen. Sorry, Jonathan, that I kept you muted, but aren't you happy that I put my texts on silent? No comment. All right, this is working nicely. Let's get into that shirt, shall we? So the shirt is even more neutral than the face. So I'm, I'm grabbing some black into the pile of, of white and raw umber to get something even more neutral. See what that did? This is very gray. Now, if you're sensitive to color, you're gonna notice that over here on this end side of the shirt, it actually stops being so explicitly gray and it goes uh, pretty orange, this area. So for that, I'm gonna reach into my burnt umber. Get that done. Now, 
a mistake that you'd make over here if you're not experienced is you're gonna make this area way too light because you're thinking white shirt. White shirt means white, but white shirt doesn't mean white in the shadow. In the shadow, it doesn't matter what color the object is, it's gonna be dark. So white shapes in shadow, don't make them too light. People do that all the time with teeth. They do it all the time with eyes. Look, this eye is in the shadow. Don't make that eye too light. Don't make the teeth too white. You want to be looking at shadow and light more than the local color of the object. Must remember that. What's going on here? Ah, bad move. Put some neutral color there in the beard. Very tempting. Play around with it. And here, we're arriving at the lightest part of our composition. So that's very, very exciting. I'm gonna have to wipe the brush clean relatively, and I'm taking pure white for this, but since my brush is a little dirty, it's not gonna be pure white at the end. And also I'm putting some solvent, but yeah, this part is rock and roll. See how not white it's coming out? I'm gonna make it lighter, don't worry about it. Just wish I was left-handed for this moment, because coming over here from this direction with my right hand, always awkward. Try again. White paint. That's more like it. How beautiful is that decision that Bogaro made to get, give us this little glitter? Love it. Now, some here too. This shape I'm not too sure about yet. Something like this. It's the diamond shape. This would be a good time for questions if there are any, as I'm just organizing this stuff. Something like this. I'm gonna end up adjusting this shape for sure. A few more times that you can count on. I made it a little too light, so I'm dimming it down. Don't want it to be too explosive. All right, looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Jonathan, are you here? Because you need to go. You're on your curfew. You still with us? Do I have text? <laughs> He's muted again. Let me see. Brandon, Brandon. Da, 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 da. Don't, don't see him. All right, it was fun to have Jonathan around, but every good thing comes to an end. Okay, now, as I'm just making these last few moves on this before I turn to the chat to see what everybody was writing, just get your questions written down so that when I take a look, I can see where we stand. 
Because for me, I'm pretty happy with where we've gotten. I think this is going to be super fun to continue. Just making some adjustment to the edges. And when I do that, I like having a dry brush on hand because I don't try to deposit any new paint. What I'm trying to do is use the paint I have already on the surface and manipulate it a little bit. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. And now, do I have anything else that's calling out to me? That was kind of silly, but not really. Kind of want to make this a little bit darker. All right, this is pretty satisfactory, wouldn't you think? It's gonna be great to continue this next time. And thanks to everybody who's joined. And sorry that the question answer mechanism was a little wonky. It's a little out of my hands, but I'm gonna do what I can to fix it right now by answering everything that's in the chat. So let me go to the chat and let's see what everybody's talking about. Let's see now. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. For longer videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon at patreon.com slash kengoshen. For lessons, please visit my website at kengoshen.com slash lessons. See you next time.